So as this is my result, I think it was also a cool idea to, for example, here, these are quite flat surfaces, but since this is a brick wall, I would actually see bricks appearing. So I would like to make a procedural system that can place bricks here on these walls automatically. Now, to do that, we can have multiple ways or approaches, but in here, I would like to focus on creating a point cloud or a bunch of points that are representing where every possible brick could be. To make this process a little bit easier, I actually copied the building generator. And in this building generator, I decided to remove all uh, budget pieces. So we basically are having this back again. So, but important here is of course that the height and so on is the same as our original one. So we are a bit consistent in that way. Then again here, let's blast away that top piece that we don't necessarily need. So this was called for the floor. So reverse that. So we have this. I'm also going to delete the corners. That just gives me a better result. So in the blast nodes, let's use here the corner pieces. And we can blast them away one by one. Then next up here is let's fuse this geometry together. So the points are connected and let's do a flatten, this all flatten edges. So we really have only the necessary space here. Then I'm going to resample our geometry. So we'll create a lot of points on each line and I'll probably have to enable resample by polygon edge just to make sure it follows our original shape. Then I'm going to place a group node. And in this group node, I want to select points. So I'm going to say points and I'm going to filter out based on the Y position. So if they are smaller than, let's say, 0.1, we now have all these points at the bottom. So probably want to go even lower. So only have like the bottom row. And then I want to blast away all the other ones. So blast, uh, this was called group three, reversed it. This is then one layer where bricks could be. And we can control by this resample how much bricks, the size of the bricks. So how big bricks are. Probably this value would be enough. And then I'm just going to simply place down a duplicate node. And we're going to duplicate as much as we need. So in here, we will just duplicate all the points so we have a big space of point clouds. Now to make sure we have enough duplicates, I'm going to go here and add a spare input again. And I'm going to input here my a building generator so I can know how high actually my building is. So in here I want to change the total numbers to my bounding box looking at my spare input so minus one. Then I would like to know how high my building is and then we can divide it by a certain size. So let's start with 0 0.1. So now we have this result. So this is already quite high but I think my spacing here should be lower. I think maybe 1.5. And let's check out how my normal building is. So I probably need to play around a bit more with the values. I'm gonna also make this 1.5. So it's nicely consistent there. Then now based on the, now we have all the points here. And what I could do is I can simply do a group is I can use the group and I can use the bounding box region based on points. So these will be points in building like that. Now we have to enable, of course, bounding regions and enable this. So now all the points that are selected are in the building, but I noticed that some points are a bit off. So I might have to double check this. And probably one reason for this is in a bounding, when we use the bounding region object, when objects are overlapping, it might happen that they get deselected. What if we, for example, would quickly here with a fox holder. Now I can actually see that we don't have that overlapping geometry anymore. So if I would enable my points here, we can clearly see 
the difference that with the voxel we are making sure we don't have that much overlapping because voxel will merge everything thing in one big mesh so now i can blast on all the i can blast the necessary points and i see that actually everything is still based on lines so let's place down actually also a add node and delete all the geometry so we only output points now we are going to reverse this and these are all the possible areas where bricks could be now also here i have a piece for my window and my window is actually a concrete part so i can use the blast node so since i set up nicely these concrete groups i can now here delete this so i can delete that part so now the basic idea is that we can actually do a copy to points and we can now copy paste a box so they might be need to be scaled smaller these will be my brick walls i can also notice that they're not in the right rotation so i might have to make sure i add the right rotations over here so let's go back here where i did this resampling let's place a normal node and let's use the point normals so now i have normals facing where the primitive is facing so this is way better now so they're all facing the right direction i can make it more like a brick ship now so again based on this resample value over here we can then decide how long a brick should be now what would make also sense is that bricks are not stacked like this they would have more variation than simply just being stacked like this on here in the duplication notes i want to, I want to output this number then i want to promote this number so attribute promotion and i'm going to just copy paste this name this number at the moment is actually stored in a primitive that's why i'm going to promote it so and here you can see in here this is the copy number it's primitive but i would like to set this into points then i'm going to use a fob attribute fob you can use a wrangle as well depending on what you're familiar with now what we can do here is we can import a point attribute which will be that copy number so i will say so this will be a integer from our first input and it's called copy number so what i can do is i can ask the modulo and use this here in the inputs and ask the modulo from two so let's display this in a color so it's clear to everyone and what this will do is that we'll now have a zero and one so every time we have a different layer there will be difference in uh, one zero one zero one zero and so on so I can use this to then move a certain layer. So I can move these two layers separately. And to easily move points, I'm going to use the displays, displays along normals. That's an easy way to move points. And we can use this modulo here in our amount. Then our points are our points. And I want to move based on the normal. And let's set our new points here. So they might have now moved to a wrong position but to fix this we're gonna have to use the cross product of our normal so currently our normal is facing the area where we had the wall facing so for example here it will be this direction but i would like to have a other direction and i can use the cross product here to then control where this direction is going so let's say for example this and now i can get more control so as you can see it's moving in the right direction now so i can scale this here like so for example and i think that's more interesting for bricks so they have a bit more variation so what i see is that i probably need more bricks on the sides here i probably need three rows on each wall to like fully fill this area because otherwise it's not going to be noticeable that they are actually 
the bricks coming out. So I want to create more points for that. So what we can do instead of copying a box actually is to copy a normal line. So in this line, we can, for example, add a three points. So we will have here a line with three points. So for three layers, and this probably needs to be rotated. And axis align this as well. So then we have like three rows, but I think my line is probably too long. So let's set this smaller. Let's start out with something like this. And we can always increase that value. Also here could be a good idea is to also add some normals on the lines because at the moment I don't have any normal direction. So if I would copy my bricks on this now, it might happen that my bricks don't know where to copy. As you can see, they don't really know in what direction they should be copied. So on the line here, let's create an attribute for our normal. So we want to have a normal. This is a size three vector tree, and I would like them to face Z direction. So let's do that. And now everything has a normal. We can see that they're all pointing a certain way. So they're all pointing where we had originally the normals pointing. They're also pointing in the same direction. So copying the bricks on them now, we just have three rows. Now there is some little spacing in there, so we can control the spacing here with the length. So this is maybe a bit better. Then next up, I might place down a fuse node here, just to be sure we don't have any overlapping points. Then now I would like to specifically place my points where I have this destruction. So there are multiple approaches to this. So in here, what is interesting, is we could grab this shape again, so the or original boolean shape. What if we extrude this shape? So do poly extrude. And we can then extrude this outwards, for example. So now we have a bigger version of that. And then the difference between these two shapes can then be the area where we have bricks layering around. And you may notice that our boolean is now having trouble with actually showing our results actually doing a voxel again might be a good idea so in here i use the low voxel resolution so let's do it here as well and this can just help again removing some conflict because since i'm extruding here the shape you might get easily overlapping areas and now that immediately does way better it gives us the proper result so now let's get a group and select our points for destruction. So here group, gonna set this to points. This is for points destroyed. Then we're gonna use the bounding region, set this to object, so we can input an object. Gonna use the voxel here with the extrusion on this. So these are all the points that will be influenced by a destruction. Then let's do another group node. And in here, I want to use then our first voxel, which is the smaller shape, and plug that in over here as well. And maybe now play around here with our merge setting. So we can, for example, we do union, or we can in here subtract. And now we have this small layer of bricks here that are the destruction. So basically with this extrude node, we can define how many, how many bricks we should see. So if I would say, uh, 0.5 here it's going to show here a wider range of bricks so you're going to have to play around with this value to what you would like to see there so now i'm going to use a blast node and we're going to blast away the destroyed points and then reverse this so these are the points that i want to have bricks on so let's bring here my copy to points with the brick here so these are areas where bricks are placed. And now let's merge this result with our building. And now I have this result. So there might be some settings we want to tweak then. Like I can see a brick flying around here, so I can 
look and start defining like why did that happen and we can see here it's because of that voxel shape now here i tweaked some of the settings so i played around here with the extrude node so i have this result now now what could also be nice is so i have my bricks and so on you can still have some customization on there so they are controlled by these groups with what will finally be shown so we can adjust in what you see what we can also do is we can add some randomness to the bricks more so let's say i want the bricks to have a little random rotation so i'm going to use the attribute randomizing then in there i'm going to set this to our normal and in here i'm going to set a low value so let's start out from 2, 2.2, 2. this will be 0 because I don't want any rotation in the Y. And let's set this to 2 as well. Let's see how much rotations we have. As you can see, we have some random rotation going on. So important here in the random is actually to set the operation to add the value instead of setting the value. So add value or you can use another operation. So with the add value, you will make this way more better and subtle. So we have that variation there. So I have basically now the result that I want. So I have bricks here scattered around this broken area. So this will be my brick and I will unwrap this. So unwrap my brick and I also decided to then make all the UV chunks basically here fit on a brick like this. So my brick also have an unwrap. I might also delete the color. So attribute delete. I remove our color. So it's a bit more consistent here. So we have this broken wall. So if these bricks are too much for you, you can still tweak that around. That's also seen here with my quick sheet note. And I can see that my bricks somewhat align with my texture. So that's actually so that's actually okay. But again, we can tweak that as well. We can change the height of our brick. We can change the height on how where points are placed. We can change we can change the spacing between points and so on. So we can have that all adjusted here to then match your texture. So but since you, this is quite big building and player probably won't even notice when he's just looking at it. I think this is okay. So that was it for this part. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.